Hi, I'm Abby. I am the mom of the Bear Hill family. Usually on our channel, we talk about faith, family, parenting, homeschooling, those kind of topics. So if you're interested in that, I'd love to have you subscribe and follow along. Today, I wanted to take some time to talk about what it was like growing up as a biological child in a family that did foster care and adoption. Um, I understand parents' hesitations when it comes to foster care or adoption when they already have a biological child. It really puts a whole different spin on things and you want to make sure that you're doing what's right for your kids also. So I hope that by sharing my experience, I can help you understand what it's like from a biological child's perspective. This is my experience and my experience is so unique to what any other experience would be. Um, but if you are coming from a faith-based background, I think that there might be some key components here that would help you and maybe put you at ease with this decision that you are considering. So. I don't know, <laughs> I guess. Let's get started. Well, to really uh, tell you much of anything, I have to tell you first about my history, uh, my parents' past, and they started foster care before I was even born. They had already had numerous young children living with them, and in fact, they were in the process of adopting a little girl when they found out they were pregnant with me. I know. I'm a miracle baby, uh, pretty special. <laughs> but I can't imagine that this was actually uh, super great timing or easy, easy for my parents either. This little girl had already been living with my parents um, and they were already in the process and I know that they love me and wouldn't change anything, but uh, they've mentioned her a couple of times and so I know that they still think about her and wonder how she's doing too. So from there, they continued fostering and actually got into doing group home parenting. We lived in multiple group homes and these were all with boys that were significantly older than me. And yes, it was a boy group home. Um, but so they were like mostly teenagers actually and there for various reasons. So if you are looking to shelter your children, <laughs> um, this might not be for you. Uh, no, my, I, I was still well protected and taken care of. There were definitely situations, um, that parents should be alert and cautious of. And, um, that's, I, that's in everything though, right? And no matter what you choose for your kids, there's always a danger or a risk there. And really our kids are not ours. They're on loan to us from God. They're in his hands and we have to use wisdom and make the best decisions we can, but they're in his hands. And so if you have been called to fostering or adopting, there is a level of just um, handing it back over to God and saying, I trust you with this situation. Lead us and guide us in wisdom right? And I know that if at any point I would have asked for my parents to stop doing foster care or if I had been in danger in some way that seemed um, out of control, they would have stopped doing foster care. And, and I do know this because when we adopted my sister when I was seven, I'll get into her story in a little bit, but it was time to step out of foster care and just focus on myself and my sister uh, so that our family was taking care of the priorities that God had given to my parents. So they did a great job with that. And there is a continued reevaluation in the process. It's not once you start, you stick into it for life with foster care, right? Like you get to reevaluate what that looks like from time to time. But here's what I really learned through the foster care uh, system um, and what I would advise. And well, first of all, let's just be clear that like, I don't think the foster care system in America is perfect. 
by any means. Uh, it's very flawed. However, it's very necessary. And I think it would be hard to structure a perfect system like this anyway. So I'm very thankful that uh, it is available because at least in some way, these kids are being taken care of. And I do believe that the majority of people that get involved in being foster parents are doing it for good intentions and right reasons. And it's just a hard field, a hard ministry. Um, and so you really need to surround yourselves with support of others who are going through it as well. As a biological child, what I witnessed I witnessed the love of Christ. I witnessed sacrifice. I witnessed uh, putting others first. The fruits of the Spirit, uh, love, joy, peace, <laughs> patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Like, my parents had, they gave up so much. I, I saw them... Um, teach others how to drive and let them drive their vehicles and even sell them their vehicles at a very good price so that uh, these kids would have a way to get to work and to start off their life. My parents by no means made money doing foster care. Like it is not something you get in to make money because that's just not going to happen. Um, my parents sacrificed holidays and birthdays and all kinds of things uh, so much to be able to demonstrate true brotherly love, to practice real hospitality. It was just beautiful and um, yeah, it was hard and there were tears and struggles and uh, but you know what, like I know that they look back on it now and they realize the difference that they made in these kids' lives. And actually, we have had multiples of the teenagers come back. Um, we had one that would try to look up my parents for Mother's Day and Father's Day for a while when we were still in the same area. But after we moved, uh, let's see, I reconnected with one of my brothers on Facebook. And yes, there are multiples of them that I consider still to be my brothers, even though they only lived with us for a year or two or three years. Um, I, I do consider them to be my big brothers and they were just, I don't know. It, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. Like it was a short amount of time, but I did feel like they became family. Um, so I reconnected with one for a while uh, and then we lost touch again. And uh, then actually for Christmas one year, we got a phone call from another brother of mine who uh, just wanted to thank my parents and tell them that it was years later, but he was finally understanding um, the love of God and that he had become a Christian and was really cool and I mean we're talking like what 15 years <laughs> after he stopped living with us that this is happening and there are definitely sad stories too but there's I'm sure there's a million other good stories that we don't know about either so anyways from that um I just witnessed good things like the necessity, the beauty of it, um, and loving others, thinking outside yourself, right? I learned to not think about myself first. I saw what these kids were coming from, that I had security and that my parents loved me and that they were there for me. Um, and these other kids didn't have that. Uh, I don't know all of the stories because I was very young, but I didn't need to hear the stories to know that there was abandonment issues, abuse issues, and these kids just wanted to know somebody loved them and cared for them and would be there for them. And at least for a short time in their lives, my parents were able to be that for them. Um, I think a lot of times in our society, now in our culture, we're so led to be narcissistic and think about me, me, and oh, poor me, I don't have the newest iPhone or whatever. But in this situation, I just learned to be thankful and grateful 
for the necessity of family and love and food and a warm bed. Like it was a really healthy thing for me to grow up seeing and witnessing and experiencing. So foster care, yeah, it's tough. And like I said, like you get to reevaluate it and where you're at in life and if it's right for your family or not. Uh, Chantel at Intentional Living does foster care and she has two of her own children living with her and they bring in younger kids. And she has great stories of um, just sharing what's going on and the hardships of foster care. And so if you're looking at getting involved in this, I would recommend you checking out her channel. I'll leave a link in the description. She also has an adopted son, so that might be useful uh, to, to you. But I think she has a beautiful heart for God and ministry and um, could be an encouragement to you as well. So check out her channel down below. Okay, let's talk about adoption. That should be an easy one, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> if I thought that I witnessed uh, self-sacrificing through foster care, well then, adoption is a whole new level um, of sacrifice. And so <sighs> we adopted I'm sure for multiple reasons, but from my perspective, <laughs> because I wanted a sibling who would stay with me. I had all these siblings who were older than me and younger than me. And, and my parents, uh, they did either foster care significantly older or significantly younger than me. And I haven't actually, like, that's something I just thought about. I haven't actually asked them about their intentions in that. Um, and so I don't know what that would be like different for your situation if you're looking at closer ages, but I think that worked really well in kind of setting me aside as to know that I was theirs and to not have competition in some of those ways. Um, but when I was seven, really, really wanted a sibling that would stay with me. I wanted a sister to play Barbies with or a brother to beat up on um, because I'd had so many good, fun experiences beating up on my older brothers already that I just wanted a brother probably to be like my big protector too. And uh, so we started looking into adoption. My parents decided to adopt from Russia and we found a little girl who needed a family. And we got to go to Russia when I was seven years old and pick her up. And while we were there, we were told that she had cerebral palsy and actually a doctor from America went with us too because uh, she was adopting also. And so she checked out my to be little sister and said, yeah, she has cerebral palsy. And in fact, it's so bad that when you get back, you might not be able to care for her. Like this might be a pretty uh, awful thing. She might have to go back into a hospital. Like we don't really know how far this is gonna go or what her abilities are going to be. My little faith story, <laughs> my parents asked me, and I don't know how much like input I really had or if they were kind of already making up their mind on the situation, but they asked me if, uh, if I still wanted this little sister who might never play Barbies with me, who might not be, um, the sister that I had always dreamed of. And my response was, if we don't adopt her, who will? And the truth is that people don't adopt kids with needs like this. Uh, they want perfect little babies right? And there are kids all over the world. There are too many children out there that need parents. They have needs, um, or they're older or whatever the situation is. Um, and I was just so worried that if we didn't adopt her, that she would never get adopted. And that with her situation and living where she did, um, that, that could be, be a very bad thing for her life. So we adopted her. Two weeks later, we get her back to the States and 
all these people have been praying for her and miraculously she's healed. She doesn't have cerebral palsy anymore. That doesn't mean that she doesn't have other side effects from um, her mother's choices and from lifestyles that she uh, lived in at that time, but she does not have cerebral palsy and that is just, that's a miracle. And God works miracles and he does amazing things. So, um, yeah, that's something that I think I saw a lot and learned a lot of is we don't always know the bigger picture, but God does. And it's amazing how you can understand these concepts, these big concepts at a young age too. And I think, I think I really did. I think I really held on to a lot of these things and they really played into my story growing up in my faith for sure. Um, and it, it's just, <laughs> it is a beautiful thing to trust God. So my sister is now married and uh, working, living out on her own with her husband. Um, things are going really good for them and I'm so happy for her and I'm so proud of her and I love her so much. We do have an age gap between us. Um, so that has made dynamics a little different. If you've ever studied birth order, you know that like when you hit a seven year gap, that creates like a new family, a new birth order lineup of kind of how it goes. And so that that has definitely played a part in my family dynamics as well. Uh, my siblings are significantly younger than me. So when I was about to graduate and uh, from high school and move on to college, my parents adopted two more kids from Montana and they are half siblings with each other and uh, they are so much younger than me. I have not gotten to spend enough time with them at all and now they live all the way across the country from me so I still don't get to see them enough. I don't get to be part of their lives enough and I wish that I, I wish that I was more part of their life but my relationship with my parents is a little different now too. I get to be uh, a supporter for them. I get to tell them how proud I am of them and um, and kind of work things through. Uh, they parent different than when I lived with them and I understand my siblings are different. They require different parenting styles. They also come from really different backgrounds, really hard backgrounds that were not there were not um not kind and my parents now have to fight the battle and and this is what I hear a lot of adoptive parents talking about is the struggle of convincing your children that you chose and adopted that you love them that you are there for them and we we as humans just desire to be loved by our biological parents and to be accepted and desired and um, cared for. And when that has been neglected, it leaves a big hole, a big hole. And you would think as an adoptive parent that you can fill that hole, but the only one who can fill that hole is Jesus. And so your job as a parent is to show them Jesus, to give them Jesus as much as you can. My parents showed me Jesus so much. And I have an incredible faith because of how much I witnessed my parents modeling that to me. And I think that someday my siblings and and I feel like I've seen this some in some of them already and and others someday they will understand this better someday they will surrender to I don't know the plan God and I don't know why and I don't know how you could have let this happen but I can't do it on my own and just surrendering to God and his bigger plan it's because of sin 
that things are messed up, not because of God. And God is there to heal. And uh, as parents, you get to role model that. So your biological children, I think it'll be good. I think they will see your heart, that they become a team with you in sharing love to these other. And, and when you have a team aspect as a family, when you are on mission together as a family, that's powerful stuff. I, I When I ask parents or that I've seen like their kids grow up and become good Christians still, how did you do that? One of the responses I hear is, well, we served together. Um, we, we modeled and we did ministry together and we served together. And foster and adoption gives that opportunity to serve together. So your biological kids, um, I think they get to see some of the bigger picture, that they get to learn to appreciate what they have, um, that they get to learn to love deeply, um, and care for others. They get to be part of so much of that mission of Christ, of spreading the gospel and of, um, being hospitable and loving. And so I am glad that you are taking the time to consider if this is right for your family and I want you to continue praying about it. And if you want me to pray with you about it, I would love to do that. So uh, you can message me uh, and you can leave a comment down below or you can check out our page on Instagram and send me a message there. I would love to pray with you about this. Again, this is just my experience and things are different for everyone, but if you are a Christian family feeling the calling to love the orphans and care for them, then I would really suggest that you follow that calling and trust God that he will take care of the details with your biological children. Uh, yeah, and so I hope this is helpful. Um, also, <laughs> happy birthday, Dad. I am so proud of my parents. I love you guys so much and I am so thankful for everything you have done, not only for me, but for so many others. Thank you very, very much. I love you guys. See you in the next video. I won't be crying in that one. This is a unique video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope it helped. See you next time.